So I found out last year that uh, basically uh, the uh, government through the Office of National Statistics, they've changed the way they calculate CPI. And uh, it's not making it higher, of course, it's making it a lot lower. Saturday, July 1st, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. We're going to look at inflation today and how we're being fooled in more than one way about inflation. And I'm going to focus uh, on the UK, but I want to let you know that this applies to all the major economies in the West. This is going to happen uh, in your country too and they're coming after your savings yes uh, they're starting to um, talk about the fact that uh, three or four percent inflation is okay but i've got something even more shocking for you uh, and uh, that's what we're going to look at today uh, about the statistics in the uk and there's that old saying about lies damn lies and statistics right and in a way, uh, the government and the Bank of England, they're not really lying because they tell you they're doing it. But uh, you don't hear anyone talk about, about this in the uh, financial sector, in the financial media, mainstream. And uh, hopefully, this warning uh, from me, in the long term, will help you safeguard your savings. And we're going to come... Uh, to that at the end uh, towards the end of the video how I've been able to, to do that and uh, It's not financial advice. I'm just gonna give you uh, The story of what, what of what I've done and how it's helped me so Yeah, there's more than one way that they're fooling us about uh, Inflation the first uh, the first way is through the definition they've changed the definition uh, of inflation over the decades and even uh, the experts <laughs> the bankers the phd economists uh, they've fallen into that trap they uh they talk about the cpi or the rpi the measures of prices as inflation but as you can see here from my old trustworthy miriam webster dictionary from the 70s uh they hadn't changed the definition back then. Uh, and it said, an abnormal increase in the volume of money and credit. That's what inflation is. You inflate the money supply. And often it results in a substantial and continuing rise in the general price level. General. Because there are prices that drop even during an inflationary period. And I, I would argue that... Uh, Right now, actually, we have a little bit of deflation because the money supply is dropping year on year in the U.S. and a little bit here in the U.K. too. But uh, it's going to pick up again, that's for sure, because they need to keep this fiat currency uh, bubble going, a debt bubble. It, uh, the system is based on debt, the monetary system. And if you let the debt collapse... Uh, the money collapses and the economy goes into a depression and politicians don't get elected. Uh, the bankers lose a lot. So now I want to show you the other way that they're, they're fooling you, what they're not telling you uh, about what they call inflation. In this case, it's really CPI, which is the measure of prices. But they trick you into thinking that the CPI is inflation. And then they tinker with the CPI and they've been doing it for decades. And uh, I found this uh, by accident last year because I've been using the uh, Bank of England's uh, inflation calculator for many years. And I highly recommend you go into the uh, playlist part of my uh, YouTube channel and go into the inflation files. I've got loads of videos there about all this and you can watch it. So I found out last year that uh, basically uh, the uh, government through the Office of National Statistics, 
they've changed the way they calculate CPI. And uh, it's not making it higher, of course, it's making it a lot lower. And the Bank of England uses, uh, they, they use the government data. So they've changed the way they calculate uh, the CPI or their inflation calculator. And how did I uh, find out about it? Did I see it in the Daily Mail or in the FT? Uh, big headline, government tinkers with the CPI? No, I found it because I remember the, uh, the data roughly. Uh, for example, like from 1914 to 2020, we, we, we'd had a 4.6 or 4.8% CPI inflation. Uh, and, and then I went back to the Bank of England calculator and it was only 42 and I thought, what's going on here? And uh, yeah, watch the video I did last year. I'm going to put it up in the cards. And I, I talk about um, the change that I saw then. But I, I found another change here. And uh, this is uh, compared to a video I did about inflation as well back in December 21st, 2019. So as you can see here, I, I used the uh, Bank of England calculator back then. And uh, I was looking at uh, the average CPI rate from 1996 to 2018. And why did I do that? Well, because there's a respected uh, economist in the UK called Roger Boodle. And, and he, he wrote a book in 1996 saying that inflation was dead and we're, we're, near, uh, we're in a new zero world. And I was trying to show that, that that wasn't true. And I used a calculator and uh, it showed that since 1996 to 2018, you needed uh, almost twice as many pounds to buy what you could with a pound back in 1996. And that the CPI averaged 2.8% a year. So now if we, if we go into the inflation calculator, this is what we get. We get from 1996 to 2018, we get 2% CPI inflation a year instead of 2.8. And uh, they've changed history. <laughs> uh, and the Bank of England, of course, goes along with the government. They're not independent, really, the Bank of England. And it's now, now they're saying that uh, in 2018, you only needed a pound 54 <laughs> for uh, what you needed in 1996, while four years ago or three and a half years ago, they told us we needed 184. So how many more times are they going to change it? And uh, how does that affect investors? Well, I've noticed that a lot of people are now interested in gilts because they're yielding 5%, like the two-year gilt, the three-month uh, or six-month uh, gilt. But... Uh, what they're trying to do here is debase uh, your savings <laughs> because this inflation is going to make it easier for the government to carry the debt, but it's going to take it from you. It's going to suck the blood out of your savings, all your efforts that you put into whatever you do in life to accumulate your savings. It's going to be diluted, and we're going to look at how... Uh, CPI uh, or price rises affect savings in a minute. But let's read here. And this is the part where it's hidden in plain sight and they tell us. So they're not really lying. Uh, it goes on about how they calculated the CPI here. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But <laughs> what's important is the note at the bottom. The estimates in the calculator from 1949 onwards have been updated with revised CPI estimates from the ONS published in May 2022. And I found out about that, of course, last year, and I warned people. And the other thing they've done is that uh, prior to 1998, they used to use uh, RPI in the calculation, and they say that here at the top of this uh, these notes. But... Now they're only using CPI and we know that RPI is usually like, well, right now it's about 3% higher than, than the CPI. It used to be about one and a half to two. So they're really, um, yeah, they're not telling us the truth about how our currency is being debased. 
So before uh, we look at uh, into how I've been able to protect my savings, I want to show you how inflation, well, it's a bad term, rising prices affect your savings. And ultimately, it is inflation. It's the consequence of inflation. But here you go. Uh, we've got a thousand pounds, right? And I think now uh, there, there's a lot of talk and there's a couple of articles here, uh, as you can see, uh, one from the former uh, chief economist of the Bank of England, Andy Haldane. He's saying austerity is back and this time it's monetary. And he's saying now that we should go for a three or four percent uh, inflation target that two percent will create a lot of trouble for the economy and when we had someone the other day adam twos saying that um, <laughs> we also should forget about this two percent target so they're really pushing for this a new three four percent but as we saw <laughs> it's going to be more like five or six because they're not telling us they've changed the way they've calculated and they're basically not being really honest with us uh, of how much they're debasing the currency. So this is why I use 5% over five years. So if you have a thousand pounds, um, yeah, it will be worth 783 after five years at 5% uh, CPI growth. And then if you go here over 10 years, that drops to 613 pounds, that thousand pounds. And that's how they get you. That's how they get you. And uh, the government, yeah, they, they, their debt becomes worth less. They are the biggest debtor, of course, governments. And then over 20 years, I did the 2% because we're supposed to also believe that 2% CPI is a good thing. But over 20 years, look at how it um, eviscerates savings. It goes from 1,000 to 672 and that's what we, we, we've had as well prior to 2020. And I would argue that it was even higher than 2%. We don't know how many times they've tinkered with these CPI numbers. So I appreciate that many of you, of course, um, have been listening to, to me for years and uh, you're already protecting yourselves, but for the new viewers, how do you protect yourself? Well, um, you could keep uh, your savings in, in the bank or you could put it in a bond and you get 4 or 5%, but it doesn't look like they want to raise rates that much more. And uh, yeah, they're going to come out and say, oh, CPI is 4 or 5%. But then you're not really gaining anything. <laughs> uh, your 4% is being diluted. And probably even more because they're not really being truthful about the debasement because they changed the statistics. So what have I been doing over the last 20, well, 21 years now? Well, I, I first uh, bought gold and silver. Well, gold in 2002 and silver in 2003. And as you can see here from uh, In Gold We Trust, this is from Incrementum AG in Liechtenstein. Um, this is uh, how gold is performed in the major currency. So let's go to the British pound here, GBP, from the year 2000. You can see that the average uh, annual return of gold in British pounds has been 10.6%. It might have changed a, a bit recently because the gold price has come off a little bit, which is, in my opinion, a great opportunity to load up, seeing what they're going to be doing to our savings. And as you can see here, there are years where it drops, but mostly in the 21st century, it's risen on an annual basis. And uh, this is where the uh, volatility, price suppression, and uh, the de denigration of gold bugs, people like me, comes in. Because if they allowed gold to uh, go up every year by 10%, people would twig onto it and say, well, let's put our savings into gold. And they don't want you to do that because they want you playing uh, the game. They want you to keep the debt game going. They want you in the system. Uh, so that's why when people have asked me in the past, like three, four, five years ago, 
I've got a bond that's coming due. Should I, what should I do with it? And I always used to say, buy a little bit of gold. And they said, oh, but it's too risky. And, and I don't think they ever did, a lot of people. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, it's not uh, a way of um, making money because gold is money and so is silver. It's a way of protecting your purchasing power. And uh, it's a long-term game. It's savings. They don't want you saving. Uh, and they want you borrowing and spending in their fiat currency. So if you haven't bought gold and silver, and after uh, listening to me and doing more research, you're interested, go, go to the description of my video below. Uh, and uh, I've got a, a few affiliates for precious metals in the UK and in North America as well. All the details are below there. Uh, and uh, most of them, you can call them and, and talk about how to go about it if you have never done it. But I would say it's not rocket science. You just uh, buy a, a gold coin or a bar and, and that's it. If you buy from a reputable dealer, of course, it's going to be fine because uh, my affiliates have been in business for like 30 to 40 years uh, generally. So uh, inflation, yeah, they're fooling us, as I said, in more than one way. Uh, and the definition part is really important because then, then they can fool us into believing that inflation is low by tinkering with the CPI. And they have tinkered with the CPI. They've made it public, but very few people look into it. It's only people like me. Uh, I haven't seen anyone else talk about this in the UK. And uh, there you go. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't heard uh, Martin uh, Lewis talk about it. All, all that uh, the money-saving expert seems to want to do is uh, to get the government to help everyone out. But he doesn't expose the government. The fact that the government is uh, really ripping the public off, ripping savers. With that, I'm going to wish you all a very good uh, Saturday and a very good rest of the weekend. And for my viewers in, in the U.S., uh, you've got your 4th of July holidays coming up. Uh, I wish you a, a happy 4th of July and that hopefully the ideals of the 4th of July come back in the U.S. We, we've seen here in the U.K. Nigel Farage's uh, bank accounts have been kind of frozen or closed down. Another reason to have a little bit of uh, precious metals outside the system. So there you go. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.